Yeah, let's get started. So it is me, Malcolm Ray, and Leo Thompson. Yes, otherwise known as that sci-fi guy. Yes, and I'm Malcolm Ray from the Nostalgia Critic. Doug, Tamara, and Rob are all out sick, uh, as you all might, may or may not know. So this is going to be a little bit different from what many of you may have been expecting, but uh, we're going to, you know, open the floor for like a Q&A sort of deal, or we can do like, um, you know, movies everybody disagrees on, <laughs> that sort of thing. <laughs> Yes, um, I don't know if you all are familiar with that at all, because um, if you've been to uh, his panels before, we usually just like throw out a movie, uh, talk about it, and then uh, some of you can share some of the movies that you might like and everybody else hates, or a movie that you hate and everybody else seems to like. Like we were, we were just talking about uh, Spider-Man 3. Yeah. We, we, was, yeah, we, Sam Raimi. we actually both kind of enjoy that movie. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not flawless. It's got problems, but yeah. uh, but it, it was enjoyable. And I was saying, there's the scene that everyone picks on. You know the scene, right? The, the, the so have you ever seen a picture of what Sam or Ted Remy look like? They look exactly like that. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, so like I when I was watching that scene, I was just giggling, going, "Ah, oh, he looks like Ted." <laughs> like, so I I don't know. I, yeah, I hadn't, I'd never know, noticed that before until you just showed me a few minutes ago. But like the reason why I like that film so much, the Spider-Man 3, is that Sam Raimi, he did not want to do a third Spider-Man film. Like He only wanted to do the two. That's what he initially had agreed to do, but contractually it, something happened. But they basically forced him to create the Spider-Man 3 movie. And so he was basically kind of trolling uh, Fox at that point. And so he was like cramming in all of the villains and well, they they forced him to include venom oh yeah they forced him to include venom that's right because the funny thing about it because so so spider-man 1 comes out everyone loves it spider-man 2 uh people are like oh ooh, who's the villain gonna be and he's like well i like to pick a personal journey for peter and then take a villain that matches that journey and like complements that story that i'm telling okay so spider-man 2 comes out we get doc ock yeah. amazing Spider-Man 3 is announced. Who's the villain going to be? Well, I like to take a personal growth story for Peter. And then, like, almost the exact same quote, right? So, And then, so he makes his, his, his script, and, and the studio's like, yeah, the fans really want to see Venom. So could you just, like, stick that in there somewhere? And he's like, but I have a whole movie kind of already, like, this plot. It's like, yeah, I, I know, but just... Just work that in there somewhere. So that's why it, it felt yeah, it felt it's a little weird. It felt so weird. so Spider Man Four was announced, and again, same quote. I like to pick a personal growth journey, blah blah blah. So he, he picks his villain, and it was gonna be the Vulture. Oh wow! See, I and yeah, and so he comes to the studio and says, "I'm gonna make this movie. The villain's gonna be the Vulture," and they're and they're like, <laughs> "That's not gonna sell tickets. Pick another villain." <laughs> it's like uh, I. I think we're done here. <laughs> like, yeah. let's. <laughs> yeah, so that's when you just kind of like cut, yeah. cut ties from. But uh, what about you guys? Like, are there any movies that you like really love, but everyone else seems to hate, or vice versa? Uh, uh, Star Wars prequels. Oh, the Star Wars prequels. Oh wow, <laughs> that good old CGI. Uh, back when uh, yeah, George Lucas was still like. Yeah. To be fair, I don't, I don't hate the Star Wars prequels as much as other people, but that might be contributed to by the fact that I've watched the entirety of the Clone Wars show, and that show is good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that kind of makes up for it. And it, it, it takes some of the random nonsense in those movies and ties them together and makes it look like Lucas had a plan. <laughs> uh, I get it now. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's totally what I was going yeah. for. <laughs> what a Chlorian. Frozen versus Tangled. Oh, Frozen versus Tangled? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I actually haven't seen Tangled yet. I, I, I know, I'm sorry. I, I haven't seen either of them in their totality. I, I've seen Frozen. I mean, I thought it was alright. <laughs> Malcolm's never seen Tangled. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Malcolm's never seen. Yeah, you there. What do you think is the best movie of 2016? Ooh, I would have to look at a list. I don't remember specifically um, which ones came out in 2016. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Did, did, uh, did, did Civil War come out last year? Yeah, okay, there we go. That's the best one. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, I mean, Civil War 2 was good. I don't know, let's toss up between that and Deadpool, probably. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Man, yeah, I'm, like, 2016 had a lot of good things and it had a lot of bad things. So, like, I'm trying to, like, go through my memory yeah. and all the good stuff. Bad things. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, Civil War is, like, what really, really... Uh, you know, what's great about Civil War is, uh, did you ever read the original comic series that it was based on? Boy, what a train wreck that was. Um, the, they managed to cherry pick the good parts and sort of consolidate it down into one like palatable story. Uh, yeah, I thought they did a good job with that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Aside from the Batman trilogy, everybody knows Christopher Nolan for Inception with like the boom and the nonlinear storytelling and mm -hmm. stuff, but does anybody remember the prestige he did like six years before? Oh yeah, I love that movie. It was so much better, but, no, but like nobody did nonlinear loves storytelling, that everything perfectly, that Inception was very kind of mediocre, but nobody remembers it. It didn't have the budget. Yeah, yeah, no, it did. No, you're right. It was a great movie, but yeah, it just didn't. The studio didn't push it. It didn't. It wasn't like a blockbuster, you know. So. It's... Oh yes, you there. Uh, what about Prometheus? Oh, Prometheus. Yeah. Huh. I have real mixed feelings on Prometheus. Same. Like, I like it. I wanted it to like kind of fit in with the 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 alien, you know storyline but it just it, feels it almost did it almost did but it doesn't quite like i can't tell if they meant for it to fit in with the alien story or if it's just its own thing i was a little confused watching it i mean there's definitely <laughs> dots so, connecting like it, things yeah but i can't tell if it would yeah best comedy of the year yeah oh wow Deadpool? Oh, oh. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I, oh. Yeah, yeah. True. Okay, okay. I was going to say, um, how do you feel about the Alien Covenant trailer? How do you think that's going to turn out? Oh, there, oh. Yeah, there, there's a trailer. I mean, you know, it's hard. I try not to judge movies too hard from trailers because they are so misleading and I've been burned so many times. Uh, splice. Um, oh, I, I, oh wow, that's a movie. Like I kind of like that. One. I hated that movie, but that's largely due to the fact that the trailer really said you're getting this kind of movie, and then it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the alien, I mean, it it looks like it could be good. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. What was your favorite movie as a child? Favorite movie as a child. Hmm. Favorite movie? Um, mm, maybe the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about that, yeah. <laughs> so you can laugh at mine. I, I don't know, for some reason I really liked Over the Hedge. I don't know. Like for some reason, it was like such a like a that was enjoyable. Yeah, it was like kind of slice of life. -y. Yeah, it was like such a simple story, and just uh, Bruce Willis playing the voice of a, a raccoon is like, like you know, it works. Like dynamic. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. I believe. Oh yes. What was your favorite review? Oh, favorite review? Uh, yeah. Uh, again, it's like between. Uh, the Mad Max review and Rogue One, like right now, those are those are my two favorite ones. Um, before I got on the show, my favorite review uh, is Howard the Duck, because that's actually how I got <laughs> that's a really introduced good one. to Nostalgia Critic. So I only did two uh, reviews with the Nostalgia Critic, and, let, and if you don't count the um, uh, Lemez review where I had a little cameo in it, uh, Total Recall and uh, The Sixth Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I really enjoyed the Total Recall one. Mm. 
I was wondering, uh, what was your favorite Shyamalan movie besides The Sixth Sense? <laughs> Oh, favorite Shyamalan movie besides The Sixth Sense? I enjoyed The Visit. Have you seen that movie? Any of you? Yeah, that that is probably one of his uh, stronger, more recent movies. Actually, I think he's starting to find his uh, his uh, his flow again because, like that, and uh, the recent movie Split. Split was actually pretty good too. It's ridiculous and it's got that Shyamalan feel to it, but it he's making it work. And uh, I would I would probably have said Unbreakable if it had not been spoiled for me. I was working at a Dollar Theater at the time and we had just gotten it in, and I was gonna watch it that night. And a customer comes out and they're like, "Oh man, that movie was so good." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm really looking forward to watching it." And it was this, and this part was good. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it as soon as I'm off, off shift. I'm really looking forward to it. And the best part was in the end when, oh, see, that's that's when you gotta stop him. That's when you gotta I tried. I said like in like three or four different ways. Yeah, I'm going to watch it soon. But like, I'm, like, <laughs> you just gotta get the duct tape ready. Just like, no, <laughs> no spoilers. But have you seen Split? No, I haven't seen it yet. You should check it. Yeah, yeah, check. I plan to. Because you know all this happens, you know, with uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you right there in the green shirt. How do you guys think the new Power Rangers movie is going to ruin the whole series? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the new Power Rangers. What do you think about the new Power, Power Rangers? Rangers trailer? Have you guys seen that at all? Or no? Yeah, I've seen the trailer, and I uh, I was never like largely attached to the Power Rangers. Like originally, um, I caught episodes here and there. Like I, I didn't hate it, but it was never really my thing. So I'm not really like I have no investment in it. So I mean, I don't know. The trailer looks all right to me. Yeah. Um, although, <laughs> like I, I mentioned this yesterday, but like uh, Brad had said, it looks like a mix between uh, Breakfast Club and Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> so far, with like the vibe the trailer's giving. Yeah, the Breakfast Chronicles. <laughs> the Breakfast Chronicles color coordinated. Yeah, pretty much. It's like Green Shirt's been trying to yeah, ask the, one. Yeah, right there. So, what movie are you looking forward to doing in 2017? Oh, uh, hmm, how these are coming out? Is, is Star Wars coming out this year? Is that, yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. That's, well, when, when does Black Panther come out? <laughs> is that this year or is that next year? Yeah, it's next year. It's next year? Oh. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of good movies coming out this year, it yeah, seems like. I need to like. look through the roster again. Um, oh, yes. Uh, hmm. I think I saw your hand first. Red hoodie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite animated movie of last year? Uh, Zootopia. Yeah. It's so good. So good, man. I don't recall. Like, I wish I had a lit, like, we need a... Yeah. <laughs> Every movie that came out last year. <laughs> Did you see Zootopia? Uh, I didn't. Oh, then that's why. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Why. <laughs> yeah. that's why you haven't picked a favorite. Yeah, Zootopia was so good. I've heard great things about it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, the storyline is fairly simple, but it teaches, like, very point... It, it's a great social commentary that can be introduced to anyone. So I'm usually a fan game. of that. Yeah, so at any level, like, you know... From you know, from the age of like two to ninety-two, like anyone can pick up on. All right, uh, let's go this one here. Favorite Saturday morning cartoon? Does uh, I watched a lot of He-Man. Sweet. Yeah, and Thundercats. <laughs> Which, by the way, there's a comic right now that's He-Man Thundercats crossover. Wow. <laughs> that's intense. Um, mine was uh, a show called Sam and Max. I don't know if any of you can like... Yes. <laughs> yeah, I see you over there. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was a... It, it's a weird, weird show, but I, I love it so much. It's quirky. It's Kafka-esque. It's everything. Um, yes! I heard there was a Flintstones comic book. But it's probably bad. <laughs> if you haven't heard, there is a Flintstones comic book, and it is the best comic book currently being published. <laughs> you laugh, but I'm really not kidding. <laughs> oh man, yeah, you gotta describe it. You gotta like it is social commentary, and it is so subversive. 
there are it. So, and what's huh? No, no, uh, no, no, not at all. And people think I'm the ghostwriter on this comic at this point because, like, short of pulling out pages and reading. Literally reading, people are like, Flintstones! I'm like, no, really, go read the Flintstones. It is the, it, they, they are the modern Stone Age family. <laughs> <laughs> From the town of Bedrock? Yeah, okay, so, so here's a good example. There's uh, Slate's Quarry, right? That's where, where Fred works. Uh, a worker gets trapped, you know, crushed, under, you know, trapped under some rocks. And Slate's all like, I don't have time to worry about that. That costs money. Fred's like, no, we need to save him. And, and Slate's like, why? It's not your family. It's not even your friend. Why do you care? And Fred's all like, because this whole civilization thing, if it's going to work, if it's going to amount to anything, it's going to be because we learned to do one thing. It's like, oh yeah, what's that? To, to care about people who mean nothing to us. Hey, that's pretty intense. Like, yeah. Flintstones. Flintstones. <laughs> Read it. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Misty. Um, what do you think about the new upcoming Iron Man 4? Really? Whoa, I had heard yeah, nothing of... Y you mean Spider-Man Homecoming? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Uh, I haven't heard anything about it. Um, yeah. Well, I, I haven't seen anything about it. Is this, is this fairly recent news? I just Googled it. It's, it's real. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> I just heard about that yesterday. Oh, wow. So I was just wondering if y'all might have Okay, yeah, you know? I have to look it up. Oh. I mean, I like Iron Man. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, let's see, who haven't we called on yet? You, you played so many different characters. Black Willy Wonka, Benny. Who's your favorite character that you played? Um, and Bill. <laughs> and Bill. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, good old Bill. He was there from the beginning. <laughs> uh, <He's> my favorite. <laughs> Let's see, um, my favorite character, uh, it, it, again, it's between, like, um, the devil, uh, between him and the Channel Awesome version of myself, because the Channel Awesome version of myself is a caricature. It's Doug's interpretation of what he thinks I'm like. <laughs> so it's really funny um, having to, like, uh, interpret what he perceives of me. It's it's always fun playing Doug's version of yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, speaking of recent news and what she brought up, what are your recent, what are your thoughts on the recent passing of John Hurt? Uh, it's incredibly sad. I mean, but it, you know, someone pointed out there was a lot of celebrity deaths in 2016. Um, it, the, the friend of mine says, "Look." There's a generation there called the baby boomers, and there were a lot of us. This is going to keep happening. This is just the beginning. Hold tight. Mm -hmm. Optimism. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the circle of life. Everybody knows how to take the plays. <laughs> They'll have their own unique, different way of doing things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, some hands over here. Yeah. This is sort of a repeat from yesterday, but like a different spin. We talked about um, y'all redoing an entire review on uh, Nostalgia Critic. Um, recently, y'all did that video for. Um, I've just been a lot of you. Oh, Hocus Pocus? Uh, but then, like, a retrospective uh, and sort of like an updated, like, almost even. Uh, Doug changing his mind about it, being like, well, yeah, I guess it is 90s cheese. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any more plans to revisit old reviews like that? Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, like, I know Doug's talked about, like, past movies that he kind of uh, had an opinion on it, like, before, but he kind of has, like, a new perspective on it now. So, I mean, it's a possibility. Um, there's been nothing planned definitively, but, I mean, <laughs> Who knows? I, he, he writes them and he has all these ideas, so we'll see. <laughs> I, think, I think Pip Boy, was that? Uh, what were your opinions on the Assassin's Creed? I have not seen that yet. I haven't you seen can. it. I, I didn't really play the game either. I played like 
some of the games like and i feel like why is this a movie <laughs> it's like we we have the story in the video game form already it's like it's all there it's like why does this need to be told cinematically money, when, money, yeah, money. yeah exactly <laughs> it sucks okay yeah, i'll take your word for it so it's like played it already I got the experience i'm satisfied um yeah we'll just go down the line right here um, I have um, two questions at this point. What is your opinion on Point Dynamite and out of the 3D brothers, which one's your favorite? Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see. Twofer. Um, Napoleon Dynamite. I, I guess we I, both kind of... I barely remember it. Uh, <laughs> it was okay. God. Uh, I feel like it was uh, ahead of its time. I think, like, at the I, time. I could see that. Maybe I should revisit it. Yeah, I didn't really get it. Or I, everyone was like, you know, making all these quotes. Like, he's very quotable. I felt like he was, like, one of the first memes before <laughs> meme became a thing. Um, you know, about Pedro and stuff. I was like, I don't get it. Tater tots in your pocket? What? You know? <laughs> but, you know, looking back at it now, um, like, that non sequitur style of humor, you know, like, seeing that being done on, you know, Tim and Eric, awesome show. You know that sort of style of humor. I'm, I kind of get it now. So I might revisit the movie and watch it just to see what it's all about. Come back next year and we'll answer your question again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, oh, my my favorite 3D brother. Um, probably distracting. I'm 3D. You know, <laughs> just just crazy and manic and like flipping around. Um, but yeah. Uh, Pink shoelaces. Yes. What uh, movie or series has your opinion changed over time? Either you loved it and now you hate it, or you hated it and now you love it. Uh, you, okay, we'll say I'll go with uh, Superman Returns. Uh, because when I came out of that movie, I was like, yeah, some things about it I kind of didn't like. You know, I was like, yeah, it was, it was all right, I guess. But then I kind of, as time went on, I really hated it, and it made me really angry. But now, Man of Steel came out, and I can look back on Superman Returns, and I'm like, well, at least it was a Superman movie. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Oh, I, I, oh th okay, this one was fairly recent, and it was pretty instantaneous. Um, have you guys seen a movie called Sausage Party? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, like, listen to that. Everybody's like, oh, and then some of you are like, ugh. Um, Okay, so my initial reaction watching it, like one of my my good friends, he just, he's just all about like raunch humor and like just very lowbrow humor. So I'm just like, okay, fine, I'll listen to this to with you. Because I had no plans to see this movie at all, and I'm sitting there watching it, and you know, I'm just like, ah, ugh, you know, ugh. But then like as the movie went on, I was like, hmm. And I came out of the movie very polarized. Like I'm like, I can't tell if I hated that or liked it. And I watched it a second time, and I love it. It, I do. It's like, it's so good. It's like, I mean, if, if you think about it, it's kind of like South Park with that, you know, very lowbrow, raunchy humor, but at the same time, it's great social commentary. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but oh, yeah, it, it, it yeah. looks, I've been meaning to. The trailers look fun. Yeah, check it out. The animation's actually really good. It's like really, it's like if, you know, like DreamWorks or Disney decided to take more of a, an adult, <laughs> right, <laughs> Seth Rogen humor. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, uh, let's see. You in the back with the pops. Yeah. Um, do you think there's any chance that they could possibly be an avatar the Last Airbender? Like, could they do it? Could they do the movie well? Could they do an Avatar: The Last Airbender movie properly? That's the question, right? Decent. <laughs> I mean, well, I would say they could. Yeah. Like. I feel like I feel like adapting I feel like adapting a story that's that grand on a scale because it's a whole series. Like, there's no way you can you know tell a story like that in just like a movie or do, two or even. Do you three. think they could concentrate like on a specific arc, like maybe an earlier arc? Maybe, or it can just like it can even be its own original thing, just taking place in the world of you know oh yeah maybe the, just some different yeah, characters yeah maybe different characters or maybe like a specific part of the story like you said but there's no way you can like complete the whole you know you know story of Aang being found being found in an iceberg and then you know 
Zuko's arc, arc, arc from uh, being, you know, this vengeful prince to, you know, becoming, you know, an ally. Like, it, it's just so much in there. Like, uh, like to try and compact it, compact it to just a few movies. It's like, it's nearly impossible. So I, I, I think, you know, telling like, you know, maybe a, a centralized story, a, like centralized a small story. local, like, yeah. yeah, right. It would be more effective that way. Mm-hmm. You know, right. They could, like, you know, some change it from the material completely, but still make it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's possible. I mean, I would say that arguably anything could be made into a decent movie. It's so, just a matter of finding, like, a good director and producer and, you know, and, and somebody who cares. Good ex- script. Exactly. Because, like, there, there's fan made stuff, like, on YouTube all the time that just blows Hollywood stuff out of the water. Like, there's this uh, fan made. Uh, a live action film like Future of Trunks. Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, Last Light of Hope, I think it's called. Yeah, something like that. And yeah. it was actually really good. I'm like, you know, for like a shoestring budget, like, it, yeah. it, it was pretty solid. Like, yeah, I love no, that. Yeah. It's better than a certain other live action adaptation of Dragon Ball that I will not <laughs> mention here. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, uh, hat. What's the worst movie you've ever seen? Garbage Pail Kids. Oh. <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, for me, uh, it's a movie called I Know Who Killed Me, uh, starring Lindsay Lohan. Uh, it was bad. Just look it up, it's bad. But you'll laugh. Paul Giamatti's in it. He plays an evil piano instructor. <laughs> yeah, it's real. It's better trouble with the Oh my god. Uh, oh, here in the, here in the front, we'll go this one and this one. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, talking about live action adaptations, do you have any opinions on the videos in the show? Um, again, I try not to judge movies based on the trailers because it's hard to tell. Uh, there's certainly some controversial choices made, but you know, Casting and things are done for reasons, so I'm just going to reserve judgment until I can actually see the film. What about just the idea? Uh, I mean, it, it could work. Yeah, it yeah. could work. It could. Because, I mean, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> um, yes. Just, oh, yeah, right here. We'll just go down the line. <laughs> uh, what's your current obsession? I, I sort of have two right now, because uh, I was going through the Nickelodeon Turtle show, which I'm really enjoying. Uh, but then I I put off watching Dragon Ball Super for a long time. Uh, GT left such a bad taste in my mouth <laughs> that I was just like, nah, maybe I'm done. And oh god, I'm I'm somewhere near the end of the the Goku Black saga. I'm not quite at the end of it yet, and I'm really enjoying the show. Uh, that I I really like it. The yeah. first couple of arcs of it literally retell. Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F, just a little bit more drawn out. So, like, if, if you don't care to revisit that, you can kind of skip those. Um, but, yeah, no, it, it goes from, like, oh, I'm enjoying this, to, like, and I, as someone that was kind of watching it with me, but, like, not really. Uh, it's like, oh, I'll watch it if you're watching it and I'm in the room, you know. But I got to a couple episodes and I'm like, uh, no, you're, you're going to care. Like, you have to watch these episodes <laughs> I watched last night. And they're like, okay, yeah, next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Super, super has definitely been an obsession. It, it's had its ups and downs, but for the most part, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm a Dragon Ball fanatic, diehard. Um, again, GT, <laughs> so like, bad. yeah, and yeah. it just also it, again, if you if you had the bad taste of GT, Super pretty much just ignores it. Yeah, it does. You, you know, Toriyama came out of retirement and said, "I'm picking up where I left off." Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, Super Dragon Ball Super. Steven Universe mm. and uh, Walking Dead. Oh, and Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah no, I currently I, like mine. I I, I, re- I both read the comics and watch. So I guess that's another. One. I read the comics and watch the show. I, I love that story, and I, I honestly feel like I I feel like the show at times is made to mess with people that have read the comics. Like they'll set things up and be like, "We're doing this. We're doing this." No, we're not. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, I'll read about the comics, and then, you know, I'm expecting one thing to happen. I'm like, wait, this isn't right. <laughs> yeah. And I love it. I love yeah. that they do that. Okay, 2-4. Okay, 
the Hobbit, what was your feelings on it? And then the Hobbit versus the Trilogy. Uh, the Star Wars Trilogy? <laughs> the, the Hobbit. What do we think about The Hobbit and how do we compare it to The Lord of the Rings? Um, I, don't, I mean, it was okay. I, I mean, as you might guess, I'm more of a, a sci-fi guy than a, than a fantasy. Uh, um, but it, I don't know. I, I thought it was alright. I enjoyed it. It was fun revisiting that world. By the third movie, I was pretty Lord of the rings out. Um, I have not seen these movies yet. <laughs> so I can't really um, comment on it. I'm sorry. But I would definitely say, I, I, would, I guess I would say that the Lord of the Rings trilogy was a more, was a bigger story. More, so I pro probably enjoyed that one a little bit better. Uh, this one might be a bit cliche, but favorite and least favorite films of last year? Well, least favorite's easy. Batman vs. Superman. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, I forgot about that one. Why did you remind me? I tried to, yeah, I tried to forget about it. Yeah, that, that was my least favorite. Uh, my favorite was, uh... What's that? I said, you mean Bruce Wayne vs. Clark Kent movie? Right, Man vs. Man. Dawn of Superbat Justice. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, I'm not even going to get started because I'll take up the rest of this panel. <laughs> this panel is about how bad that movie was. Uh, but my favorite movie was uh, Zootopia. Yeah. Favorite movie last year? I really don't. I mean, there was a lot. There was a handful of movies I really liked last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to cop out and say Rogue One. Oh. Because I like Star Wars. Rogue One was good. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty solid. Uh, let's see. I, I think we called on you yet, have we? Um, going back to the trailer questions. Or um, to the what questions? To the questions about trailers. You say you try not to judge them based on the trailers. Yeah. Have you ever made? Have you ever considered making an effort to completely avoid the trailers? How, how do I ever? I try not to judge movies based on trailers, but have I ever? Have we ever tried to avoid seeing a trailer to a movie? Uh, absolutely, and I'll tell you why. Um, the Matrix Reloaded. And here's the thing. If I had not seen that trailer and seen all of the really interesting, good reveals that that movie had prior to seeing the movie, if I had experienced those moments while watching it, I would have enjoyed that movie a lot more. Um, so I've kind of I've taken a stance where if there's a movie that I... You already got my money. Like, I'm going to go see this. I don't, like, I, I, this is guaranteed. I will try to avoid the trailer. I did that with Rogue One because I wanted kind of like a taste of yeah. the kid in 77. What is this? Because, you know, I, I, I really do like to experience those moments while watching the movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, like, usually it's trailers that get me invested in a movie, so, um, Unless I just see a movie poster, and then I'll just go and watch it. But like recently, I made, <laughs> I, yeah, it was a mistake. I just saw the the poster for uh, <laughs> Bye Bye Man, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna even look up the trailer. I'm just gonna go see it, and <laughs> that backfired <laughs> a little bit. No. Um, the hash slinging. <laughs> so the movie is worse than Slenderman ripoff. Uh, it's more of like a Freddy Krueger ripoff. It's like a discount Freddy Krueger. <laughs> oh, well, that now I'm sold. <laughs> oh, no, are I'm you? Kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Uh, Trailer Man looks like a discount Slender Man ripoff. Yeah, it's kind of. It's weird. Slender Krueger? So, yeah, Slender Krueger. Slender Freddy. <laughs> Freddy, Freddy Man. Freddy Man. <laughs> Freddy Man. <laughs> He's just wearing a suit. Yeah. <laughs> right there in the yellow. I had like two quick questions. Malcolm, do you play Darth Vader in those videos? <laughs> yes, I do. That's me. <laughs> Dark side. I also want to know, do you think you can do that dance that you did at the end of that world war you? Oh, do that dance? Yeah. Oh, sure. Ha, ha, ha.
I, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a dancer, so. <laughs> but yeah, now you know. <laughs> uh, let's see, who is next? Uh, yeah, is Nightwing or? Son of the Batman. Oh, Son of the Batman, okay, uh, yeah. The uh, old Dark Knight comics, Dark Knight Returns. Oh, nice. Right. I've heard you say you like Steven Universe. Who's your favorite gem? Uh, my favorite gem? Uh, man, I, I gotta say, Obviously, Garnet. Like I don't know. Like she's just badass. Like you know, she's got the you know the British accent. She's got the glasses and like the pro hair, the toast hair. I, I haven't watched Steven Universe, so I'm gonna say Garnet too. <laughs> that's that's a good answer, actually. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that you guys actually want to see a movie made out of? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the Flintstones? <laughs> <laughs> that that version. No, bo- yeah, that version. No, Booster Gold. Oh. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, you were telling me about that. I love Booster Gold. Wait, isn't that fun? Yeah. I love DC. Yeah. Sorry. Hmm. Wonder Woman might change that. Oh. Uh, I'm worried about Wonder Woman. It's the last... Okay, so there was a major regime change at DC Films, uh, and Wonder Woman was the last one that was still sort of helmed by Zack Snyder with no, like... You know, he was really in charge of it, so, like, I'm really worried about it. I hope it's going to be good, but it is the last of that regime, so... (laughs) Um... (laughs) Let's see, me, um, a movie that I want to see done. Like, I, I want to see a proper X-Men movie, X-Men movie, like where they're incorporated in the current Marvel Cinematic Universe. Because it, it's just like a travesty, because there's so many connections between, you know, the X-Men and the Avengers. It's like, ah! Like, um, having the uh, Scarlet Witch and uh, Pietro... Like, it just, ah, oh, it, it fell so flat for me because there was not that connection with Magneto. Like, I feel like Magneto is necessary in that. This is that, they keep, this, this is Fox and, and Marvel <laughs> Studios picking at each other and both trying to screw each other over. Mm-hmm. And I wish that they would just get along. Yeah, I really do, like, ah, oh, but now Deadpool is so good, now they're never going to be yeah. friends. <laughs> oh. So it's like, I'm torn. It's like hitting seeing mom and dad fight. <laughs> <laughs> you like uh, Green Jacket? If you could pick any of one or two X-Men currently in existence and put them in a uh, Avengers movie, which one would it be? Oh man, uh, I gotta say like Wolverine for sure. Because uh, I, I know like uh, Hugh Jackman, he's gonna be retiring the character after Logan. That's like a uh, And I think it's pretty, yeah, that's what they've yeah, confirmed pretty much. Because I mean, he's been playing the character for twenty years, but I would have loved to see him in one of the Marvel movies. That would have been interesting. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to see Wolverine in there, and I want to see Magneto in there, because those are like two titular characters that are like they appear like everywhere across the Marvel storylines. Well, I'm, I'm torn between maybe Cable oh, or yeah. or uh, X twenty three. I don't know if you know X-23, the female Laura. clone of, uh, semi-clone of Wolverine with it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, let's see who we got next. Uh, yes, you there with the hat. Which do you prefer, Rogue One or Force Awakens? Say that again? Rogue One or Force Awakens? Which Rogue, which is what? Which is better, Rogue One or Force Awakens? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to say Rogue One just because I really felt Force Awakens was just a remake of Episode 4. Uh, like, by the, by the third, like, second or third scene in that movie, I'm like, oh, okay, so the, the bad guy enters the ship and they're going to take the plans, I mean, map, and put it in the astromech and send it down to the planet. Like, this, or we're doing this? Or this we're okay, we're doing this. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, I, I got to say Rogue One overall is a, is a movie is... A stronger movie because it's um it's an original concept um we haven't seen the side of the star wars universe before so i mean you had all these new concepts and elements that are explored uh force awakens it, it is a rehash and, and not not that i didn't like force awakens i was just 
kind of disappointed. And, and that's, I think, also largely due to the fact that I am reading the current Star Wars comics, and the current Star Wars comics are good. Uh, it's, they're, uh, a lot of them, most of them take place between episode four and five. There's a lot of story to tell there, and the, uh, there's a Vader comic specifically, and it's so good. Uh, and there's, there's this character in it named Dr. Aphra, and she has this R- R2 and 3PO foil. Uh, I refer to them as the murder droids. You wow. know, it's a triple zero. It's like he's an astromech, right? But he's got that like kind of black chrome plating and red eyes. And he's like, he's, he's like, oh, I am programmed in etiquette, protocol, translation, and torture. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like when I read his dialogue, it's 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 three PO all the way. You know, like it sound, I hear three PO, but it's like, oh yes, I, you meet bags. I'm looking forward to draining your blood. Wow. Like, <laughs> uh, the example, they they go to Geonosis, right? The the termite people planet. Right, and so they show up, and he's there, and uh, and he he, there, he comes across like a group of the natives, and he's like, "Oh, you must speak Genos and Hivevine, a language I am quite familiar in." And alas, I have nothing to say. And then like the, his little R2 foil, like this, it is, which is a blastomech Tarkin thing made to look like an astromech full of artillery, and it just lays waste and destroys them all. And he's like, "Oh, I just thought of something. Uh, ha ha ha! You are all on fire and now dead." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so again, I've, the Star Wars comics that I've been reading, and and uh, uh, the Clone Wars cartoon and Rebels, and there's just so much good Star Wars right now. And then I saw Rogue One or uh, Force Awakens, and I was like, eh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm excited to see how they follow up with it. Though. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to the next ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll listen. Andrew, what is your reaction to the Cars Three trailer? <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to steal that one. Smashing. Smashing. You know, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, they've been, like, just kind of milking this series, like, it's cars, you know, and they talk. Cars feel. But, um, I don't know. I, it looks like they're, like, trying to, like, do something with Steve McQueen when he's dying or something. They get rusty. I don't know. I kind of rusty. Hmm? I kind of related to Days of Thunder. Related to Days of Thunder. I could see that. Somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah, I could see some parallels there. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Ash High. So, going back to Star Wars, and I'm going to get a lot of passion in this, I guess. Jar Jar Binks, opinions. Jar Jar Binks? Seriously. <laughs> I mean... There's a lot of problems with that character, obviously. Have you heard the the, uh, the Darth Jar Jar theory? Yeah. I, now, now, I would love that. I would, you know, I, I hope that, I mean, have you seen there's interviews with Ahmad Best and they ask him about it and he's like, you know, okay, so the only person who really knows is George. He's like, but based on what George told me, there could be some truth to that. There could be. Um, I wish they hadn't gotten gun shy. If if it was true, I wish they hadn't gotten gun shy and stuck to that because that would have that would have been cool. Yeah, that been excellent. We would have gotten Yoda versus Jar Jar lightsaber battle. Yeah, it, it would have like, it would have made up for it because it kind of like is that whole you know that um, bait and switch sort of thing. Kind of like with uh, the Toby character from Naruto. Like, you know, he's super goofy, but, you know, really... Well, and even George, in interviews, like, in interviews, in interviews from, like, the, you know, like, the 80s or so, talking about Yoda, mm. and he said, in these fantasy stories, you'll often, ent- you know, come across this character that seems kind of silly or nothing that is later revealed to be something big and important. Right. And that's obvious, and he obviously likes to, you know, echo uh, things. So I, I really do believe that that might have been the plan, and I'm disappointed they didn't stick to that. Right. But yeah, now he's just a bad character. <laughs> uh, let's see. Gunshot, I'm like, gun getting shot. Haha! Oh, oh, wow. Um, yes, you there. I don't think. Would, would you rather watch Andre or Crumpus? Or or I haven't seen the Crumpus yet. Um, I did see the Conjuring. I liked. Uh, I like that series, that movie series. Um, it's just classic horror. Like it, it does a good job with suspense. I do like the kind. I, I haven't seen either. You haven't seen either? No. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, <laughs> it, so, so wait, so how many of you actually like the Conjuring series? I don't know. I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? Okay, so some people haven't seen it. Some people are just kind of like. 
Yeah, it is. Um, I like them both. Um, but I have not seen the Krampus yet, but I've heard mixed things about it. Uh, honestly, watch uh, Rare Exports Incorporated. If you want to you know, see a sort of Krampus-style movie, hmm. Rare Exports Incorporated, A Christmas Tale. Look it up, watch it. Uh, it was, I don't know if it currently is. No, it's 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 just titled. It's a movie. There there were there were short films that were made on on uh, like Vimeo that the movie is made by those people who made the short films, but they were commissioned to make a movie. I'm not sure which order I say to watch it in because they both have spoilers for each other. I, I don't know. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, I called on him. Were there yet? How would you ever feel about an old Republic movie for Star Wars? Like set thousands of years before the fall of the old I mean, that could be cool. I'd be down for that. I'm, I'm, I'm up for. I love. There's so this, the world. I mean, Lucas is not necessarily the best at dialogue. <laughs> we we know this. Um, but he created a fantastic, large, rich world, and a lot of people have contributed to the richness of that world. But the world is huge, and yeah, I mean, I would love to see. If that's part of why I like Rogue One. Like, let's see some other parts of this mm -hmm. universe. It's, yeah, I, I would love to see it. I mean, there's there's so many different like ele like aspects of the Star Wars universe. It's I'd be up for it totally. <laughs> maybe not the Dark Knight, but maybe the Fall of Man or something. Yeah, yeah, man. I think you've been trying to get one for a while, Blue Yeah. Shirt? Hey. Yeah. Uh, this is actually a question from Malcolm. Are we going to be having more Bill? <laughs> more Bill? Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Again, it's like one of those characters that we just did not expect to like be so well received. Um, do you, do you think that you, reusing that character would kind of go against the gag and run it into the ground, or do you think that that it should remain a one-off thing, or or? You, you know, I was actually thinking about that last night because I was like reading like comments on YouTube and on my Twitter, like, oh man, you got to bring Bill back, and I'm thinking like, well, like the the gag is is that you know like. You know, he just suddenly appears and he's like a character that was yeah. supposedly there all along. Like, if you keep bringing him back, it's, it might defeat the character's purpose. I don't I mean, know, there's, there's different ways to work with it. I, would, I mean, it's my suggestion. I don't write it. But I would say maybe if, if, if there's a gag that's appropriate to reuse it. Right, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, maybe he'll be gone for a while and he just appears again. And, like, they start recalling, like, events and, like, adventures that never appeared in any of the reviews. And he just like I don't know has like laser eye beam powers out of nowhere or something. <laughs> that's so Bill. Yeah, that's so Bill. Just, he's a great guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's just like one of those characters, like um, like Black Willy Wonka. He was supposed to just be like a one-off thing. Like he was just supposed to like appear and never be like you know heard from again. But um, like he's come back consistently. And now, you know, the chart guy is still there. So now there's questions about that. Like, is the chart guy still Black Willy Wonka? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> so it's just kind of one of those things. Like, you never know what sticks. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah, you there. Um, so like on the topic of like the horror movies, uh, how do you guys feel about the idea of the, the Rings uh, movie coming out, the remake of The Ring? Is it a remake? Well, I, I think it's going to be like a new story. It's, yeah. Now, now it's like modern. But it's actually like a prequel. Oh, really? Is it? Like, I mean, how do we feel about Rings? I mean, I loved the first movie and I, I watch a lot of horror movies and uh, <laughs> I I specifically waited. I did not see that thing in the theaters because I specifically waited. I'm like, this is a movie about a cursed videotape. I'm gonna watch this on video. I don't feel like watching this in the theater is the right medium for this. And I and I, I just got. I just moved into a brand new house. I literally set up my entertainment system on just enough. Like put my setup around surround sound with like wires running across the floor, like just enough to watch this movie. Like first night in this new house, and I couldn't walk around the house in the dark for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, man. So I mean, I enjoyed it, and I enjoy the Japanese movies. Um, like I, I like the franchise, so I, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Instead of a haunted VHS tape, it's a haunted YouTube video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> haunted digital download. <laughs> no haunted <laughs> Blu-ray disc. Yeah. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube Satan. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. That's. Me. 
Um, right here, yeah. Um, what Japanese filmmakers do you have make an American horror film? Hmm, that's interesting. I don't know a lot of Japanese filmmakers by name. Yeah, yeah, not, like, I can't think of any, like, right off hand. Like, I, I feel ashamed. Um. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Um. um. Was, was House, House was Japanese, right? Was that, or was that Korean? Wait, old, old-ass House movie? Um. Uh, no, the bad No, House, uh, it, it was, uh, it's like a horror movie. Like a, it's kind of like a horror comedy. Like, uh, maybe, maybe, the, maybe the guy who made Battle Royale, although didn't he die? Or did he die? I don't know. Maybe the, the guy who made Battle Royale. We Is he? New to it. it was upside down, but <laughs> I, I got it. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, so we have two minutes. We'll take uh, like three more questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, scarf thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, are any of you two uh, gamers? And if so, uh, what consoles and video games y'all usually like play? Uh, I'm a gamer. I usually lean PlayStation. Uh, I have a PS4. Uh, I've been playing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I like I like to play uh, horror genre games and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I uh, just started Resident Evil 7, uh, really enjoyed the, the PT demo and, and uh, some of the sci-fi uh, Dead Space was great oh, series. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Man, yeah, we gotta hang out now, because like, you just said everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> like, I love Dead Space, I love horror games, um, but aside from that, I also like JRPGs. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm super excited for the sequel to Nino Kuni. You guys know what Nino Kuni is, right? Yeah, yeah, there, there's a sequel coming out, apparently. So I'm, I'm really hyped for that. So yeah, PS4, and well, I don't have one yet, but I want to get that and Nintendo. I, I want to check out Nintendo Switch. I really want to give it a try. Because yes. it's, yeah, it's the only way for us to get our, you know, our, our new Nintendo. Zelda game. Yeah. Our, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see, two more. Uh, red, red hoodie. What do you think, as far as the episode 8 of Star Wars, how do you think they're going to handle the whole Carrie Fisher Princess Leia situation? Well, I mean, how, how do we think they're going to handle Carrie Fisher in Star Wars 8? I mean, as far as I understand, her her scenes were shot already. So do you think they're going to like, kill her off off screen, or are they going to try uh, yeah. to eventually... I don't know. I hope they don't kill her off off screen. I hope they kind of do a, like, well, she's off doing important things in the Senate, and, like... Being an important person that just doesn't have time to be part of this story anymore, or or or, or, or that, that. <laughs> or perfected <laughs> somehow. We can rebuild. We can rebuild. <laughs> oh no. Uh, let's see. One more question. Uh, uh, let's see. Man, I think your hand was up first. Like, yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on Boba Fett? Do you think it's like the best guy in ever, or is just no great that guy like the He had cool armor. Kind of, kind of like Captain Phasma. She had cool armor. <laughs> see, I, I, I would like to see them do more. Ah, uh, I feel like you were the last okay. one, like with your hand up, like you're the yeah, only one. So, yeah, one go more. ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. You can remake any classic film you want. The one catch is you have to recap uh, the roles are swapped and everyone is over the top track. You never make a film that. Oh, wow! I'm so glad we called on you. Remake any film we want, but the one catch is that all the roles have to be over the top drag queens. <laughs> Cast as over the top drag queens. Well, clearly this is The Godfather, <laughs> is the vessel for. <laughs> Oh man! Oh god! <laughs> I don't think I can top that. <laughs> uh, Man of Steel. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Man, it would be fabulous. All right. Well, thank you all for coming out. Um, yeah. <laughs>